I'm Ryan Cole, I'm an engineering geologist with the Mount Hood National Forest and the Columbia River Gorge National Scenic Area. And we're out here today at Multnomah Falls Lodge to discuss uh, BEAR, which is Burned Area Emergency Response, and some of the work that we've been doing to implement uh, BEAR prescriptions after the Eagle Creek Fire. So here at Multnomah Falls Lodge, we're surrounded by a lot of bedrock, and that bedrock is the Columbia River Basalt which came from Eastern Oregon and Washington about 17 million years ago and flowed all the way down the Columbia River to the Pacific Ocean. And here at Multnomah Falls, we've got four separate flows of Columbia River basalts. And in between those flows of Columbia River basalt, we have discrete weaknesses which have the ability to erode. And when that erosion happens, the rock above that layer between basalt flows falls away and it creates what we call talus. And talus is just rock fall that accumulates at an angle at the base of a slope. And the angle that it accumulates at really depends on the rock's angularity and its size and shape. So in any case, here at Multnomah Falls Lodge, we've had headward erosion of these basalt flows and that's established a talus slope behind the lodge itself. Now after the fire, it sweeps through, removes vegetation, which was acting as a cohesive factor to that slope. So if you can imagine tree roots growing down into the slope, that root actually helps stabilize some of that rock. So not only do we have tree roots, we've also got small shrubs and even moss that can actually help to hold that slope together. So as that rockfall continues to accumulate on a slope that is being held together by vegetation, it gets steeper than it naturally would with a lack of vegetation. So now that that fire has swept through and removed that cohesion, the slope at its angle that it currently is can't hold that angle and it tends to fall down. The problem that poses is for Multnomah Falls Lodge. If we get a big rock rolling down, there's essentially nothing to stop it um, from hitting the lodge. As part of the bear process, we identified rockfall as a potential hazard to the critical value that is Multnomah Falls Lodge, being that it's a historic lodge, we wanted to protect that. So in order to quantify the rockfall hazard, we ran a rockfall analysis, uh, which is the Colorado Rock Simulation Program. It's a three-dimensional model that essentially rolls rocks of various sizes over a slope that we generated with various surface roughnesses. And so when we roll rocks of various sizes, we can see where the model predicts they would end up and with what energies they would get there with. So based on that, we designed our rockfall fence for a 98% confidence that we would catch you know, 98% of those rocks. So the outcome of that was a rockfall barrier that spans behind the lodge heading west, as well as across a bluff to the west side and has enough capacity that it would catch the energy of essentially an F-150 truck driving at 35 miles an hour. There are two rockfall protection barriers at Multnomah Falls Lodge. There's the new barrier where we identified a rockfall hazard from the adjacent slopes to the lodge. And then there's an upper barrier. It's along the trail from Shady Creek Bridge to Benson Bridge that was put in in the 90s to protect the trail from rockfall hazard. And the lower rockfall protection barrier has been completed and we are currently working on the upper older barrier to try to get it functioning properly again. The plan is that they're going to remove the existing um, barrier fence and start removing some of the material from behind that fence so that they can install the new, that new portion of the barrier. Bear always assumes a least cost alternative and so uh, in this case, the least cost alternative would have been to just close the trail. But being that this is one of Oregon's highest visited areas, uh, the decision was made that it's a priority and so additional funds were secured to fix that upper barrier so that we can get the public safely back up to Benson Bridge and up to the upper viewing platform. So I think our time frame for getting the lower viewing platform open would be as soon as we have that rockfall barrier completed and installed, the lower viewing platform will be open. And then to get people up to Benson Bridge, we've got to replace the Shady Creek Bridge, which is on the trail up to Benson. It was burned by the fire as a wood structure. So as soon as we can get the contractors in to get that work done, we should presumably be able to get people up to Benson Bridge. And then, you know, in stages, our next uh, target would be to get people up to the upper viewing platform. We've been working with our partners, trying to uh, ensure that everybody's needs are met. Obviously, our partners you know, really want to see a lot of our trails open, but the fact that the Bear team couldn't even get in to assess the trails because the hazard was so high, we still don't know the condition of a lot of our trails. And we're just kind of slowly getting that together. So 
a challenge for us is that we really want to have everything open. We want everybody to get back into the gorge that they love, but obviously there are uh, safety considerations and processes we have to go through to, to make sure we do it correctly. And uh, that's, yeah, that's been a challenge for us is just not being able to get it done as fast as we'd like to, I guess.